everybody, it's Chris Nichols here from the camera store. It is freezing cold, of course, because for some reason we always shoot TCS videos in freezing cold weather, don't we, Jordan? And uh, it's worth it because we brought out the brand new Nikon D4 full production model. Now, if you're a loyal camera store video follower, you've already seen our Nikon D4 preview video. And if not, hopefully you'll check out our channel after this video and see the Nikon D4 preview. Now in that one, we got to talk about buttons and feel, monitor, you know, that kind of stuff. But we didn't get to show you any images or focusing. So tonight, we've come out to Millennium Skate Park. The, the light's going down, it's getting darker by the minute. And we're gonna push this camera in action situations in low light because you know the Nikon D4 is really aimed at that. It's got great high ISO performance. It promises incredibly fast autofocusing speed, 10 frame per second frame rate. So we're gonna push this, show you guys how it handles low light action. Hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, because we're at a skate park, Jordan, I brought you a fisheye lens. Now Jordan hates fisheye lenses with a passion, but you need to put this on your camera or else none of these kids are gonna respect you. All right. All right, we'll see how many times you hear the word fisheye today, okay? Or maybe GoPro, we'll check that out. But uh, come with us, we're gonna test this camera and see what it does. What's up? Jordan, how you digging that fisheye, man? You like it? <laughs> well, we're out here to test now the Nikon D4 autofocusing system. And the Nikon D3S, the predecessor to this camera, had one of the best autofocus systems you could find in a DSLR. Now the Nikon D4 promises to be even better. It's got the same 51 point autofocusing system that Nikon's been using recently, which is great. But we've got a new cam system in here. And I gotta say, with the little bit that I've been using it, it is stellar. I mean, it is just quick, no startup delay. It goes right to your subject. So uh, we've got a skater that we brought with us, Nick Foy. You know, he's not very world renowned at all, but he's good and he works with us and he's doing it for free. So that makes him our best choice right now. So we're gonna see how this camera can keep up with his quick action and easy skating. Let's check it out. All right, now we're having really good success with the autofocusing system in this camera. Right now, of course, we're in continuous autofocus following Nick. And uh, what I'm using right now is just the nine point array in the center to follow him. And I like that because if I reduce my choosable points down to 11, I can quickly move this nine point area left, right, up, down, wherever I need to get it to keep my subject in focus. And yet, if it slips a little bit, it'll still track him. We're shooting at 2.8 as well, so thin depth of field and the camera's handling it really nice. All right, so the next thing we're gonna try here is just showing you the camera's 10 frame per second capability. We're gonna do some flip tricks here and just kind of see how the camera can capture those sequences. Now, the D4 is capable of shooting 11 frames per second as well if you do not focus. But you know, most of the time we're gonna be doing focusing on our shots, especially for action photography. So I'm gonna keep it at 10. Now keep in mind that all the shots that we're gonna do here are gonna be shot at 3200 ISO. And again, this brand new 60 megapixel sensor should have no problem doing that easily. All right, so as we take a look at the shots here, you can see that the camera has no problem catching fast sequences. We got a lot of frames to choose from. We really get to see the full sequence as it goes. So of course, 10 frames per second will not disappoint on this camera. Now, as you could probably see behind me, it's starting to get pretty dark outside now. So it's a good time to move on and shoot the camera and see how it can handle autofocusing in low light. Now, Nikon D4 is unique among cameras because it can focus even with a minimum aperture equivalent of f8. So for example, I break out an f4 lens, put a two times converter on there. Most cameras would choke at that point, but this one should be able to focus and focus quickly. Let's check it out. All right, so we're doing some a bit extreme here. We're shooting with a 300 mil f4 with a two times teleconverter on it and seeing if it will focus. Now, uh, you gotta keep in mind that because it's so dark here, we're shooting f8, I'm doing these shots at 204,800 ISO. So yeah, it looks pretty bad noise wise. The camera actually does focus. I'm impressed, it's trying, it's having a hard time. But again, it's, uh, it's hard to ask a lot out of it in this kind of lighting with that length of lens. Still, it does its best, and I can confirm that it does focus. Slowly. <laughs> All right, now continuous focus is great on these cameras, of course, but single autofocus is important too. You know, you wanna see if the camera can just grab onto Gabe as you jump in the air here, just from a dead start, and actually does a really, really good job. And again, considering the low light in these conditions here, it's doing very, very well. And we're shooting all these at 3200 ISO as well, because of course, we're losing light pretty quick. And uh, this camera performs very well. I mean, take a look for yourself, but the low light performance is pretty impressive. 
Okay, let's take a look at how the camera handles high ISO performance. I mean, you know, the Nikon D3 was an incredibly good camera in low light. The 3S was even better, and the D4 is even better still. Now, Nikon has their ISOs going up to 12,800 as their maximum listed ISO. Then it goes, of course, the high numbers beyond that. And uh, that's convenient because basically, as we look through these photos, I'll say this. You want to shoot this camera from 12,800 or below. I mean, going above into the high numbers, you can do it. Sometimes you have to do it, but you're not going to want to do it. Still, check this out. We started at 1,600 ISO because we know everything below that's going to be amazing. And as we go through our higher ISOs to 3200 and then to 6400, you can see the Nikon D4 retains a lot of great, great information. I mean, really not too much grain. Uh, colors are still pretty good, you know, up here to 12,800 and, and beyond. Now it does start to get pretty noisy. That sky is going to pick up a lot of false color, a lot of purple and green, and uh, details getting pretty chunky. Still, of course, Nikon D4 upholds the tradition of Nikon SLRs lately of having exceptionally good high ISO performance. Now, of course, one of the unique things about the Nikon D4 that we talked about in our other video is it's using XQD cards. And of course, it also uses very, very fast compact flash cards. Now, I know XQD is this brand new card system and everybody's kind of skeptical and Lexar and Sandisk are saying, boo-hoo, we don't want to make these cards, Sony, Sony, Sony. But, uh, you know, it's a fast card system. Uh, I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to leave the second slot empty? Probably not. And the advantage of it is it's very, very quick on this camera. It works well with the D4. And the D4 has just about the best buffer I have seen on any SLR to date. I mean, this thing will shoot and shoot and shoot. So what I'm going to do now is I got Nick on the half pipe here. I'm just going to shoot 10 frames per second. I'm just going to see when it quits and slows down, okay? So here we go. So it's going to burn off the shutter. Now, it's a good thing this isn't my camera because you don't want to do this, right? There's customers come to the store, they burn off our shutters. But with that Kevlar uh, carbon fiber shutter, they say we can go for about 400,000 shots. So we'll just get this camera well on its way. And again, I mean, no slowdown. There we go. We got a bit of slowdown there. I mean, we're looking at about 15 seconds of, of pure shooting. Like, that's 150 large JPEGs in a row. And I've given about, what, three, four, five seconds here? Let's go again. Still going. So I mean, not only does that buffer go forever, but man, it clears fast too. Now, of course, if I was shooting raw, I would probably get about half that, maybe 70, 80 photos in raw in a row. Oh, there we go. I mean, the thing clears so fast, I don't think that you're gonna find a situation where you really are gonna run out of shots available. This camera can deliver that massive frame rate anytime you want, all the time. And that XQD card, it performs well. So just go buy one. All right, everybody, so we had a lot of fun tonight shooting the D4. And again, I know there's a lot to this camera. I mean, uh, we really just wanted to test its autofocus capabilities, its, its buffer speed, its high ISO performance, things that matter to a lot of the, the kind of stuff that you're going to use this camera for, like journalism, action, sports, that kind of stuff. And it delivers a really, really good package of, of low light performance, speed, capability. Ergonomics, of course, very similar to the D3 camera. Everything is in a good place. Um, you know, some of these sub-selector switches are nice. I would say this about the camera's ergonomics. You can customize almost every button on this camera, so you could really make it the way you want it to be. So that's very, very cool. Um, you know, other great thing about this is using the viewfinder and the screen, these are the best I've seen in an Icon camera to date. In fact, maybe in, in almost any camera that I've seen, there's very few that have been bigger and better than this. It's great because when we're shooting in low light, I still have a very easy time confirming focus, checking my shots. I love this too. Uh, illuminated buttons, you know, shooting in the nighttime here, I get all my buttons lit up, I can still see what my controls are. That's really handy in the dark too. So these are nice touches for the ergonomic side of the camera. Really overall, I think this is going to be a good evolution of the D3 camera. It's not doing anything revolutionary except, of course, video. And the video we're going to show you when we do our video shootout with this camera and many others, see how it competes in that arena. But we've got the video, we've got the quick shooting, it's going to give you a little bit more resolution, which Nikon users usually want, and uh, still deliver that excellent, famous, world-class ISO performance. Overall, if you're looking for a camera that can do journalism, sports, action, it can be rugged, it can shoot events, uh, and you want something which is great in low light conditions, this is a fantastic, fantastic way to go. All right, now we're having really good success with the autofocusing system in this camera. All right, now we're having really good sex with the... <laughs>